All right, I think we're going, right? Red light came on, so. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Anello. Uh, talking about DDEV and VS Code today. So uh, I've been around in the Drupal community for a long time. I'm a developer and a trainer. Business is about 50-50. Um, this time of year, it's actually a little bit more like 60-40. Um, I, I run two long-form training programs. Um, DrupalEasy.com is, uh, is my company. And I love to do, this is always fun for me. I asked ChatGPT, um, oh, what happened? Well, we're just gonna go over here and ask directly. Um, tell me about Mike Anello and his uh, activity in the Drupal community. There we go. So, I should have, I should have told it like not to. So there we go. Yeah, podcaster. Yeah, that's true. Uh, trainer. Okay, that's true as well. Mentor and advocate. Oh, that's very nice. Yes. Um. Uh, very, yep, I've been very involved in the community, uh, various groups, and uh, look, I'm, I'm respected. Okay, so hallucinating. Uh, that could be hallucination, that's true. All right. Thank you very much for that, appreciate it. And get your name tab. We love you. <laughs> All right, so um, what you're going to see today is a small slice of this long form training program uh, that I run. I, literally, I sat in a in a conference room little, uh, from noon, no, from 11.30 to, no, from 11 to 12.30 and taught it from here a little while ago. Um, but it's a 15 week, two half days a week. This is only, you know, I'm not gonna, this, is, this whole thing is not a commercial, just this little slice. Um, but this bit that I'm about to talk about with VS Code and DDEV is what we do the first week of class. Um, and the idea is if you use DDEV Orlando, PHP Storm or VS Code, everything I'm about, about to show you today, you can configure to get in your IDE. And this is really all about, you know, making your, your code editor as efficient as possible, especially when it comes to module development. Because um, we're talking about things, making sure coding standards. Um, should we FaceTime with my daughter right now? Should we do that? No, I don't think we should. Okay. Um, it's all about making sure that any coding standards issue gets surfaced in your IDE as quickly as possible. PHP STAN, which is a, um, a static code analysis tool, makes you write better PHP. You want those reports as easily accessible as possible. You want to be able to do um, uh, real-time debugging. You want to be able to run tests as quickly as possible. So there's all these extensions available um, for both PHP Storm and VS Code um, that kind of integrate all of those tools with, with your IDE. So today we're going to be mainly focusing on um, uh, VS Code, here's a list of the, of the extensions, and by the way, I will give you at the very end, there will be a QR code to get these slides, so you don't need to write anything down if you don't want to. Um, these are the extensions that I recommend, and really the key one is, actually these are two extensions, and this, that first one is really what unlocks a lot of this stuff, and we're going to talk about that one in, in a couple minutes. Um, but Sniffer and Beautifier, that integrates with PHP CS, Doc Blocker, um, really helps you a lot to, cre to create um, the proper document blocks for mainly methods and functions, but some other places as well. Um, PHP STAN basically will run PHP STAN for you and expose any errors right in the problems tab or underneath a red squiggly in your code, so that's super helpful. Um, Drupal Smart Snippets, anyone who does a lot with Form API will really appreciate Drupal Smart Snippets. I'll show you a demo. Um, PHP IntelliFence, this is a, it's a pretty big extension. It's actually a freemium extension. Um, you can pay and get more features with it. I've been using the free version for a while and I don't, I don't know what I'm missing, but I don't need more at this point. Um, but this extension for VS Code really brings VS Code's PHP-ish up to the level of PHP Storm. Um, so very important one. Um, debug for integrating with Xdebug and PHP Unit Test Explorer. So right in, in Visual Studio Code, you see a list of all available tests and just click run and it'll run a test for you. Again, assuming we're just talking with the gentleman in the back that your PHP Unit configuration is all set up. Um, and then I always like to mention if you're not using settings.local.php, shame. 
<laughs> and uh, just search, you know, Drupal Easy flat and settings.local.php, and there's a blog post where I shame you more. So enjoy that. All right. So to really understand what you're going to be seeing, um, you know, I'm using DDEV. I think the latest version are very close. Latest version of VS Code. Um, I'm going to show you a Drupal 10 site, although everything I'm going to show you works with Drupal 11. Um, up and running, uh, Drupal Core Dev dependencies are installed using Composer, so that brings PHP CS, PHP Stand, PHP Unit to the table. Um, comfort using the command line. Um, I, I think if you're using these tools, you're, you're probably already comfortable on the command line. Basic understanding of Drupal coding standards, knowing that we have standards, and you should adhere to them because it makes your code more, more readable. And then some knowledge of using X debug. Like, what is a step debugger? So you should have some general idea of that stuff in order to really understand everything that I'm going to throw at you in the next, you know, 40 minutes. Um, okay, so there's no right way, right? There's, like, I'm not showing you the only way to do this. Uh, what I'm showing is what I think is a good starting point. Uh, what I'm showing you is literally what I use every day. The only extension that I use daily that is not listed up there is a little to-do extension. Because in my code, I like to do at to do and then write a message, and then I can see all my to-do items somewhere else. But that's not really Drupal specific. Um, so there's a lot of personal preference, and it's a moving target. You know, extensions get deprecated, extensions get created, extensions add new features. So this is not like a set this once to what I tell you, and you're going to be good for five years. You know, you'll, you'll be something for five years. Um, I don't know if it'll, you know, if it'll always be good. All right, so starting point. I already mentioned the extensions, um, but this remote explorer plus dev containers is the key. So I'm going to give you a little example. So here's VS Code. The way I used to use VS Code, and if you're here, I suspect the reason or the, the way most of you are using VS Code is you fire up VS Code and then you open a folder pointing to your project. So I'm going to go to Sites. I'm going to go to this. This is my current class site. And when you open up you know, the project, you're actually looking at you know, that directory, in my case, in Mac OS. Right? So that directory lives in Mac OS, and I'm looking at the files in Mac OS. Now, if you don't have PHP installed on your Mac, which it doesn't come installed on Macs anymore, you can't run you know, Composer in Mac OS. With DDEV, if you want to run a Composer command, first of all, you have to find your command line. There we go. You've got to do DDEV, Composer, blah, 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 right? And you're basically saying, hey, DDEV, whoops, run Composer in your container. Similarly, if you want to run your coding tool, your, your coding standards, you know, you have to say DDEV, well, it would be a dot, for execute, you're basically saying DDEV run PHPCS in your web container. But VS Code has no knowledge of that web container. The files we're looking at are not in that web container, they're in Mac OS. So if I have an extension over here, the sniffer and beautifier, and I tell that extension to run PHPCS, it's going to try and run it in Mac OS. And you'd be like, that's not going to work, dude, and you're not going to get any results. The key is these two extensions allow you, instead of opening up a directory in Mac OS, this is the little icon for it, it shows you a list of Docker containers running on your system. So what we do is that I'm going to connect VS Code directly to the web container for this project. So I hit the little arrow. And while that opens up, let me just rearrange some stuff here. Now, if you notice, it's a lot longer up there, but that's the HTML directory, which is the default project directory inside of my DDEV web container. In other words, my favorite part of the presentation. Yeah, I just said all this stuff. Do a DDEV start, 
from Remote Explorer, connect to the web container. It's like when Neo jacks into the matrix, he knows Kung Fu. When we jack directly into the container, we know PHP CS, PHP STAN, PHP CBS, PHP unit. Because now Visual Studio Code's whole world is that container. It's not connected to Mac OS X. It doesn't know anything about Mac OS, um, you know, as far as my machine is concerned. Um, it's talking to the container. So, if we're jacked into the container and we tell an extension to run PHPCS, it's not looking at Mac OS, it's looking where that PHPCS lives in the container. That unlocks all of this. So, once you're jacked into the container, most of the extensions I mentioned have to be installed in the container. So I'm on the extensions tab right here. You'll see local installed. This means extensions that are installed in Mac OS X. And they're already installed, so I can't really show you the problem. Oh, let me see, can I uninstall one? Uh, uninstall from container? I might, this might end up uninstalling the whole thing. Yeah, there we go. It'll look like this. So this PHP debug is installed on my system. If I scroll somewhere here, it'll, there it is. But PH, uh, sorry, where am I? VS Code is smart enough to know, oh, I'm connected to a container. If you actually want to use PHP debug, you have to click that button. And I've already clicked that button for all of these. So now all of these, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure what happens. I think there's some configuration for these that ends up getting stored in the container somewhere. I don't know the details. I, honestly, nor do I care. Um, not all extensions need to be installed in the container. Um, an example of one that does not is the, if I can find it, there we go, Drupal Smart Snippets. That just hangs out. It's not listed here. So we just need to get all of our extensions jacked in as well. But I can't stress enough how, how much, do, do, do. Well, I'm actually gonna go back one. These two are the key to all of this. And you can do something similar in PHP Storm. PHP Storm doesn't connect directly to the Docker container like VS Code does. What happens with PHP Storm is you set up what's called a custom command line interface, and you tell PHP Storm um, how to run command line commands inside the container. So where VS Code is all in, they're like, okay, we're, we're, in. we're totally in the web container. PHP Storm is still out here in Mac OS land, and you're basically saying, okay, to run a CLI command, just kind of stick your hand inside the container and run it. So it's not as all in as visual. This is how I visualize it. I'm not sure if that's helpful or not, but yeah, question. Can you go back to the steps? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which steps are we talking about? Uh, uh, You don't have to write anything down because I'm going to have a QR code where you can get these slides. And well, you can. And don't let me stop you. You know, but you're going to have access to all this. Yeah. Is that container stuff like a specific to Mac? No, this works with this works uh, with WSL2 as well. Um, so containers on, on uh, that container stuff works with any Docker container. So you don't. This is DDEV specific, but you can use VS Code to connect to any. I mean. I don't know if you noticed, but I've got some you know, PHP stand, Storm. I keep on saying stand. It has all kinds of helper Docker containers for doing stuff with Docker. You can see that they're just hanging out there. Did I answer your question somewhere there? So if, if you have that container selected, now anything that you, any extensions that you install now are going, like they'll automatically go into that container in the place they're supposed to go. Yes, yeah, you don't, yeah. And it's, you know, VS, VS Code's whole world at this point is this directory of that container. So if you open up a different container, then you'll have to install the extensions in that container as well. But I think on Linux, I don't know that you have to do that. Like, you edit the files in... in right, yeah, with, uh, let me see. 
That's all right if you. Yeah, I don't know it off the top of my head. I've, I actually have a student on Ubuntu, and I'm trying to remember what his conversation was, what his situation was. I yeah. don't think you need to do that. I, I was. Okay. I can tell you. I don't want to go off. That's right. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> Mac OS, Windows with WSL2. This is this is the way. All right. So do, 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 that that that. All right. We talked about installing in the web container. All right. So the next big step is we got to we have all these new extensions. We have to configure them. Um, so there are two levels of configuration in VS Code and PHP Storm for that matter. There's the user settings, which are valid for all projects. And then there's the per project settings, which are called the workspace settings. So if you have a workspace setting that's the same as a user setting, the workspace set setting will override the user setting. And to get all this stuff to work, we kind of have to configure a little, well, a lot in the user settings, a little bit in the workspace set, uh, settings. So. Let me close this. To access these settings, it's easiest to use the command palette. If you've never used it, it's right there. View command palette. I use command shift P all the time. And then the most recently used will always float to the top. So you can see the top three, two of them are these workspace and user settings. So, and you can just do a search for settings and I'm, um, I'm not going to go line by line, make that a little bit bigger. Um, but a lot of these are just basic VS Code settings. A lot of this stuff just is setting the editor up to automatically format files according to Drupal coding standards. It's got a bunch of file associations so that VS Code knows if you open up a dot module file, it should treat that as PHP. There's some exclusions down here so that um, uh, VS Code doesn't index certain file types when it doesn't really need to. Um, a lot of these settings are available on Drupal.org. There's a configuring VS Code for Drupal development page, a wiki page on, on Drupal.org. It's, it's good. It's not great. Um, uh, it's, it's not as opinionated as I, as I would like it, and I, I've, I've made some changes to it, but I'm always afraid to, that too much of my opinion is going to get in there. So I'm going to give you, by the way, a QR code to this as well, if you want this. Um, and then down here, we've got some, I kind of break it up by heading there. These are all related to the various extensions. Um, so you can see this grayed out one right here. This is for the PHP linting. The language itself actually has some very basic linting. So make sure you, you know, put a dollar sign before variables and stuff like that. In order for that to work, you have to point to your PHP executable. Well, this is the PHP executable on my Mac, but I override this in the workspace settings because I want it pointing at the PHP executable in, uh, in my container. Um, so again, I'm not going to go through all, of the, through all of these. Um, I go through every single one of them in the long form class if, you, if you're really interested. Um, I think the workspace settings are more interesting, though. So we'll look at those. And there's not as many there. Oh, this somehow, I don't know what snuck that in, but yeah, that's weird. All right, well, let's look at just this. So there's the one, actually line four, is the one that overwrites the thing we just showed. So this is the path to PHP in my Docker container. How do I know that? Well, if I open up the terminal in VS Code, again, it doesn't know about Mac OS. So it opens up into my Docker container. You know, ddev does not exist inside the container, right? ddev exists outside the container to get the container running. So I can just do which, I can put my fingers on the right keys, that would help. Which PHP, I don't know if that's too small, user bin PHP, user bin PHP. The stuff that's commented out, those are the Lando paths. So I, if I need to alternate. So the PHP sniffer and beautifier extension. Let me make that a little bit bigger for everyone. There we go. How do I know what the path is to PHP CS? Oops, not that. 
you know, if you install the Drupal core dev dependencies, you're going to have it automatically. And there's the path. And there's the path. The path to the uh, PHP CBF, the uh, code beautifier and formatter. Very similar. Um, your PHP CS configuration or standard. Um, again, that's something that you have to create beforehand, kind of like the PHP unit.xml file. Um, not going to cover that today, but as long as you have a the right configuration, you know, it will work. And so these three lines are basically configuration for that sniffer and beautifier extension. So you can rinse and repeat that for you know PHP stand configuration right there. All right, so there's the path to the executable, there's the path to my config file. The PHP stand extension has some other configuration that you can, that you can put in there. Um, so you get all your configuration in there, and I'll give you a, a link to this file as well if you're interested. Oh, there we go. So there's the user settings. And honestly, you really only need the last QR code, which is to these slides, because if you have the slides, then you have this one. I just updated these uh, yesterday, so they should be completely up to date. And the workspace settings, if you're interested. All right, so now we can, you know, we've done the hard work. We did a super speedy version of the hard work, right? We installed all the extensions. We opened up our project directly in the container. We configured all of our extensions. All right, we did all that stuff, so why? What's, you know, well, let's see the results of our labor. Don't save. I don't know what I changed. Definitely don't want to save. Um, I'm going to go into a little custom service class here. Now, I have my PHP stand file to only look at custom modules. At PHP stand level 6, which is a pretty aggressive level, especially for Drupal development, um, VS Code has this problems tab at the bottom. And this will show me all problems that it finds in the code. Any extension can add data to this. PHP stand is adding issues here. PHP CS, I just ha don't happen to, I don't, I don't allow code to be saved without, with PHP CS issues, with coding standards issues. So if I introduce one, I'll close all these just so we can see it better, right? Um, if I introduce, well, what's this first one? Hold on, hold on. Oh, I know what that one is, okay. You know, should only have one space between a, the, you know, a colon and the return type. If I put some extra spaces in there, and wait a moment, and wait a moment, is there not a coding standard for that? There's got to be. Let me put one over here. Oh, there we go. That's weird. There's no, it doesn't throw that one. That's a potential, uh, there we go. So, you see PHPCS extension got involved. It tells me the file, it tells me the line, it tells me the issue, it gives me a little angry red squiggly, which I can't stand looking at, so I immediately see that and like, what the hell was that? It tells me exactly what the problem was, who reported it, who, who ratted me out, and I go in there and I fix it. Right, so just having these, these tools, having these tools is great to begin with. If you don't use VS Code or PHP Storm, you should be using these tools anyway. But you're going to have to, you know, come to your command line every time and do PHP CS, uh, Web Modules Custom, Drupal Easy, SRC, Drupal Easy Repositories, Service. That you know. No, oh, yeah, I got rid of it. So if I introduce that one again, boom. So you can get to it. Same thing via the command line. But come on. It's a heck of a lot easier just to see that stupid red thing and, and fix it there. All right, so PHP stand, PHP CS, you know, surfaced through problems and through the red squigglies. That, in my opinion, for me, that's a pretty big deal. Drupal smart snippets. How many people use this extension? 
Holy cow. You guys are going to love that. How many people do form API stuff? Yeah, okay. So let's say I don't have a form here, but I'll open up. I've got a form. Look at that. I've got a form right there. Okay. Let's say we need to add a new form element right here, and we want to add like a password field. All right, so what are you going to do? You're going to do form, you know, my password equals, it's going to be an array. All right, so what's, you know, without looking above, <laughs> what attributes do I need for password fields? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I know, I know it's going to, I could guess it's going to be type, you know, password. Uh, what else do I need? This is one of the many problems that Drupal Smart Snippet solves. With Drupal Smart Snippets in, um, installed, at form element, I just started typing at form. Drupal Smart Snippets provides this list. Pick the type of form element you want. There's our password one, hit enter, and it gives you a pretty good start on the properties that you need. I defy anybody to find me a page on Drupal, api.drupal.org that gives me this information in a clear and concise manner. Because <laughs> it does not, it used to exist in Drupal 7, those of us who are old enough to remember that. It's good enough? It's good enough? Yeah, I guess. So, but, yeah. So the other thing that this does, Drew, I'll show you one more, it does a bunch of things. Um, I'll show you two more things, actually. Um, in this dump dot module file, yeah. So in the dot module file, what if you need a service class? Just start typing at service, and it will show you all these. Are, it's not a, unfortunately, it's not a dynamic list. It's a static list of Drupal services for whatever the latest version of Drupal is. Um, like this service that I create in this module is not going to be listed here because it's not dynamic. But still, figure out what you need. Uh, maybe we need this. And it just dumps, you know, it, it does a very nice job of it's almost perfect, right? Really, should this, we should have this over here. I should open that up as an issue. Right? But it gets you a handle on the service on right there. Obviously, you don't want to use this in a class because you should be using dependency injection. Shame, if you're not. Does help you with uh, dependency injection? Nope. <laughs> no, dep dependency injection really depends on where you're injecting it to. If you're injecting it into a service, then you also have to modify that your services.yaml. Some plugins, you actually have to um, extend, um, 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 implement an interface, so it's a little bit, yeah, a little bit different. Um, and then the other thing, and this is not a huge thing, but if you just start typing hook, Drupal Smart Snippets will give you a list of all the hooks and then just kind of stub it out for you. So I really like Drupal Smart Snippets a lot. It does a lot of nice things for us. Um, PHP IntelliFence. I'm just going to show you one feature because, you know, I don't know how I live without it. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, let's see, let's say, um, you know, this is actually injecting a couple of dependencies right here, but let's say I'm, I'm curious about what's in this interface. Now, I've got the main space, so I can open up my file explorer on the left and go into core slash lib slash Drupal, and I don't even know if I'm off base already, but I could probably find this file if I wanted to. One of the things PHP IntelliFence does I can either right click and go to definition, but even easier, if I hold down the command key, I can click on it and it takes me right there. That type of like super fast access to um, classes is huge. Um, if I open up this annotation, yeah. So even like this extends plugin, like what's the plugin? Well. Hold down, open, and boom. It's, you know, I'm deep in Drupal core here, but. So the ability to like move around my code base and look at stuff like super fast, that's huge. And that's one of the many things that IntelliFence does. 
I'm not going to go into more, um, but it does a lot of stuff. That's by far the thing I use the most, though. Um, okay, so one more configuration file for using xdebug. Um, I love teaching xdebug. How to, you know, because, and actually configuring xdebug, because I struggled with it, like most people, for so long. And then I actually sat down and took the time to, like, really understand, like, what's the problem? Like, why can't, like, why is it so tricky? Um, and what it boils down to for me is, with xdebug, you have to remember two things. You know, the, you have to tell the server to send out debugging information, right? So you have to, like, enable the server to set, open that port and send debugging information out that port. That's step one. Step two is you have to configure your IDE, PHP Storm or VS Code, to listen for that signal. Two things. Yeah, those are the two things you need to do. PHP Storm does a pretty good job of making it easier with their zero config. But I'll be honest with you, when you're jacked right into the matrix, then the web server is looking at the exact same files as your code editor. What does that mean? There's no, no path mappings. And I guarantee you, 80% of the time I'm helping someone with xdebug, it's path mappings are the issue. So by both your web server and your IDE looking at the same files, the path mappings are irrelevant at that point. So with ddev, it's very easy to enable xdebug. Right, so when you're inside the container, there's enable xdebug and disable xdebug. This is the signal to the web server to start sending out debugging information or stop sending it out. This is part one, and this is really all you got to do. Enable it, boom, it's enabled. So now Nginx, which is the default server inside of the web container, knows that for every request it gets, it's going to send out uh, debugging information on port 9003, which is the default port. That's half the battle. The second half is configuring your xdebug extension to listen. So this file is a launch.json file. This is the configuration file that VS Code needs. Um, I already have one. If you don't have one, It'll prompt you to create one instead of being ready. So I'm going to show you the one I have, and this is what's at the link. Uh, VS Code, launch.json. It's actually relatively simple, I think, once you see it. So we actually don't, uh, this is actually not even the same one that's in. Yeah, what's going on here? Something happened where like, we actually don't even need this whole section. That's what's in the, um, that's what's at the other end of this bit, this bit right here. So this is, this is all that matters, right? This is basically saying, you know, listen, to, for X debug, it's going to be PHP debugging information on this port, you know, do it on every, um, on, on every request. There's no path mappings, and then, you know, don't log anything, and here's some X debug settings. So you can delete these settings and everything would still work. This just kind of tweaks X the bug a little bit. Um, but that's a, you're basically configuring the extension and telling it where to listen. Where to listen and when to listen. And what kind of data is coming its way. So if you have that, Um, I'm going to put a breakpoint there. It doesn't really matter where. I'm going to come over to xdebug. I'm going to tell it to start debugging. This little play button up here. Right? My bar turned red. It's telling me stuff's happening. I come over to my site, which of course I don't have up in a browser. But I come here. I, I have to hit a page where that X debug call is going to be made, which is going to be on a, at a profile page, and boom, we're broken. <laughs> we're good about it. Like we broke at the breakpoint. 
right? So at this point, we have access to any um, variables that are in scope, like element. This was passed in. And so here is everything to know about the element array right there. And we can step through. We can use the debug console to say, okay, well, what's, tell me about the element. Well, it's better with, um, here, let's actually just do this. You can actually run in scope code. So if I copy that, put that in the debug console, it runs that code and this is the result of that method. This is currently the only place where I actually prefer PHP Storm over VS Code. And in PHP Storm, the debug console, you can get a whole text area instead of one line. That's a very minor complaint. But when I need it, I need it. So let me. And then when you're done, you have to tell VS Code to stop listening. And you've got to tell the server to stop sending. Come on. There we go. Disable X debug. Why do you have to tell it to stop sending? Because it takes up more bandwidth. It's, it's a performance thing. If you leave X debug running, your server just runs slower. So. And it's noticeable. It's noticeable on almost any server, even a local one. Um, PHP Unit Test Explorer. Now, as I was talking to someone over here before, what I'm about to show you does require a valid PHP unit.xml file, which is a bit of the dark arts, just slightly, the, what, the first step into the dark arts of configuring stuff like this. Um, but if you have that file configured, um, I always configure mine the project root so I can run, I can test you know, any code I have. Um, I don't think there's... Doesn't it come with the, with the uh, core dev? Yes, that's if you want to run core tests. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't need to usually run core tests. I need to usually run tests that I write, uh, in modules that I write. Um, and it's not just a matter of copying stuff over. So, um, this is the extension. I don't think there's any configuration for this. I think it assumes that it can run PHP unit from the project root and that your PHP unit.xml files in the project root. I think as long as those two things are true, you don't have to configure anything. Um, it'll take a second because what it's gonna do the first time you go to it is it's scanning my entire code base, looking for every test. And here, let me get rid of the Drupal Easy. So you, I filtered it here by Drupal Easy, but if I get rid of that, it's all the Drupal core tests. I mean, there's, I don't even know what a current number is. Luckily, we can just say, my module begins with Drupal Easy. There are the tests I wrote for the module, and you want to run them all. There you go. One of them will fail. We're doing test-driven development in the course, and we're at the point where we have a test, but we're working towards getting it to pass, so this one is still failing. But there, you can see they all passed. We've got unit kernel and functional tests, and we have one that's still failing. So it's super nice when you're writing a test just to say, is it working yet? No. Is it working yet? No. Is it working yet? Granted, if you have it all set up on the command line, you, command line you can do up arrow and enter. I know. I like the visual tools. That's me. All right. I think we're going to make our time. Uh, settings that local at PHP. Use it. Or shame. We'll stop there. Uh, additional extensions. I, you know, I always install Twig Language 2. I don't do a lot of front-end stuff. But that extension gives you uh, syntax, coloring, highlighting, whatever it's called, in Twig files. Uh, to do highlights extension, that's the one I told you about. Here's the link to the documentation page on Drupal.org I mentioned about configuring VS Code. What I showed you and what this has, this page has nothing about the remote container stuff. This is all about um, what's in the uh, user settings. Um, this page, I, I should have checked, I usually check before I present, recommends this other extension called Empty Indent. You don't need it anymore. Um, uh, there's, 
but every other time I teach or present this, someone always asks me about a composer extension. I don't, I've tried them all, i played with them. Um, wild, that guy who came in here and like, <laughs> you guys all see that? Someone yanked the plug out of my computer right in the middle of my presentation? Holy cow, that was terrible. Um, yeah, the composer extensions I don't find very useful. The only like feature that, you know, I really even care about remotely but not enough to install the extension is when you open up your composer.json file inside of VS Code, It'll put in like little gray text exactly what version you have installed next to each of your dependencies. It's, you know, it's not enough for me to install the extension. There's other, there's, you know, it's got the ability to like update a dependency right from inside. It's just, it's not enough for me. Maybe you, you might find it useful. Um, does anybody use any other extensions that they like really like in VS Code? I'm always on the lookout for new ones. So, no. Are you one of those people who install way too many extensions? Yeah. yeah. I actually have Composer. <laughs> I have a client who, a current project coaching client, um, where I'm trying to talk him off a ledge because if I even like mention a module and pass it, it's installed on his site, like on his production environment. I'm like, no! <laughs> so I actually have a meeting set up with him next week where we're going to go through all of his enabled modules and I'm going to, we're, we're we're turning, we're turning some stuff off next week. All right, yeah, so uh, PMD cores, that's, that's my presentation. Um, if you're interested, if you want more of this at a slightly saner pace, not a speed run, um, next semester starts in January. Um, I actually put a little handout right in the center table if, if you're interested. I do a beginner course and this course, um, information's on that. These slides are right here. I think I'm only going to be presenting this session one or two more times because I debuted it last year at NetCamp, and NetCamp is coming up in November, which means I can't give this again at NetCamp. <laughs> so I have to come up with a... I am presenting again tomorrow on a Drupal community initiative uh, called IXP for inexperienced... Uh, I think the P stands for people. I forget what the P stands for. And, but it's all about... Um, we're trying to incentivize organizations to hire new and inexperienced Drupal developers. So people who have been trained, but just need like that first job. So we're trying to convince, um, uh, well, let's just say everybody, that it's in our best interest to give organizations, um, this is my phrase, a truckload of contribution credits for hiring a new or inexperienced developer and bringing them along. We have parameters for how long they should be brought along and stuff like that. But we want to incentivize people hiring new and Drupal developers, new and inexperienced Drupal developers. I'm talking about that tomorrow in one of these rooms and in one of these times. I couldn't tell you what. And that is all. Look at that. I, have, uh, I literally have 20 seconds left. Any questions? I've always had a problem. So I'm not using DDF. I'm using Docker. Yeah. Just I Docker raw. Yeah, Docker. I can't connect to the, the environment at all for some odd reason. So when I go to, like, I can show you this. Using, you're using a Mac or PC? So you're it's a PC. PC. Are you using um, Docker for using Windows? Or using WSL. Using WSL. Yeah, it is Docker for Windows, but it just won't connect into my container. Do you see the container listed? It shows it, but it just, it will never connect. Hmm. I don't know if I can help with that. Any ideas? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, configuration of the launch setting? Well, it's not. I mean, that's more for launch for the, the launch. Oh, you oh, yeah. for the whole. Yeah, for just connecting the for container. For connecting to the container. So when I go to, to my remote explorer every single time, it just Is the container... Um, it doesn't connect. Is the container mounted on the operating system? Yeah, it's there. I can go into Docker and it's there. But. Huh. Uh, is, it, uh, is Docker on the container or is Docker on the but it's in WSL. This exact reason is why I use DDEF. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about all this Docker stuff. Well, the thing is we have like, you know, three or four. We actually have five containers in there. So it's not like just I, a simple. I, I can add five container. I can add, a, you know, the, there's a great. Well, I'm, I'm going to pimp uh, um, DDEF a little bit. Well, i got to go outside here. We actually go from this to Kubernetes, too. And I adopt more control over it. Then I knew what to do with with you. Know, uh, really okay, this is a list. For certain things. You just install Docker on WSL. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so there is, I mean, look, I'm a big D, D dev person. Um, sure. But there are, these are containers that you can add on with one command in D dev. I mean, oh, there's sure. so, solar, last. I, I had to have control over every single you know, can, file. And, and you can, you can, you can override any configuration. Yeah. I, I, look, this is not the time, I think Bernardo's actually, did he already present on D dev? Bernardo is presenting on D dev. Sure. I don't know if it happened today, or is going to happen today or tomorrow, he might be a good person to ask about that stuff as well. Yeah. So, I'm sorry I can't help, but I, just Docker's not my jam. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I use D Dive and Lando. And... Oh, you're just gonna hang. <laughs> no, no. I just I, if I if I don't know the answer, I don't know the answer. Yeah, so. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? All right. I'm around the rest of the day today. Uh, most of the day tomorrow. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time and attention. <laughs>